This is the Bartholomew Town Podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome in to another edition of the Bartholomew Town Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Bartholomew. Today, a conversation with Rhode Island's Director of Veteran Affairs, Kasim Yarn. And welcoming the director once again back onto the program here on B-Town with Veterans Day tomorrow. Wanted to check in with uh, the director, see how things are overall. What's the overall picture in his world right now, particularly with COVID-19? How has that impacted everything from the veterans home to the different services that the state offers? And overall, just check in with a member of the governor's cabinet during this uh, really specific year, right? 2020, what a year. And hey, you never know what's going to come next. How about that earthquake on Sunday? That was actually kind of a pleasant distraction in a way from the election stuff and everything else that's been going on, I guess. You know what I mean? But um, we're staying on top of everything. By the way, this week filling in on WPRO and for Tara Granahan, 9 to noon, I was on yesterday. I'll be on on Thursday and Friday, 9 a.m. to noon. You can give a call in and we can take this thing live And uh, it's been fun talking to, uh, obviously, the WPRO crowd, but also all of you out there that have been pulled into the mysterious airwaves known as radio. And it's fun to have that live interactive platform. Of course, we have social media, the Bartholomew Town Podcast Facebook group at btown.stream. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Bill Bartholomew. B-Town is a listener-supported program, and there's a few ways that you can help support. One, you can Share this episode wherever you like to do so on social media or by word of mouth, of course, or even, hey, pick up the phone, the uh, the old tin can operation, whatever it takes. Number two, you can leave a rating and review wherever you're listening right now. And number three, you can go a step further for as little as $3 per month. You may help to sustain the independent journalism, opinion, analysis, and entertainment that we've become known for. Simply head to patreon.com slash Town, where for $10 per month, you'll be able to get some exclusive content and help support the bedrock of this operation. That's patreon.com slash Town. All right, so there's a lot going on here in B-Town. We're going to be moving the studio. We're going to be in the same space, just rebuilding out a new studio. That's going to be premiering pretty soon. Going to be expanding the video elements of everything. Um, Rhode Island PBS Weekly, which is a new television series featuring myself, Bill Rapley, and Michelle San Miguel. Well, that premieres tomorrow on Rhode Island PBS. It'll be every Wednesday. My pieces actually start running in December, um, unless uh, there's a couple that we're working on that may have some breaking news that we may get on before. But long-form television journalism, and um, really been working on that as, as well as the podcast and everything else, the live streams all throughout the year. And I uh, can't wait to share that with you. Plus, a new podcast series that's going to premiere in 2021. We've been taping that, and I'm um, really going to go into full speed ahead once we get the new studio set up finished, uh, probably later this week. So, been busy. Really appreciate your support. Really appreciate talking to all of you. It's been fun to hear from you. I'm at bill at ripodcast.com. Um, you can also send me an email, and I'll give you my signal number if you want to have a secure, encrypted message, if you've got some information you're, you want to share or just want to keep things as off record as possible for whatever reason, bill at ripodcast.com, and we can keep the conversation alive and well. Okay, so let's get to it. Kasim Yarn, one of the uh, the all-stars, if you will, of Rhode Island's political leadership and um, somebody who I always enjoy speaking with, back on B-Town, back on the pod, just for you, the day before Veterans Day, our Veterans Day special, if you will, this is the Bartholomew Town Podcast. Yeah. Still not run for public office, though, so yeah. <laughs> let's, get that up. let's front load that and get that out the way right now. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that what's interesting is we're starting to see through COVID the roles that are not someone running for office, you know, whether you're talking about the health director or any any cabinet member, anybody who's floating around, so to speak, how critical those roles are. And I guess you'd be no no exception to that and the impact that you have in just managing the crisis in, on top of everything that you do on a regular basis. So I guess, first and foremost, your role as, as Veterans Affairs Director in COVID, what has changed and what's that been like for you? How are veterans doing through COVID here in Rhode Island? Well, the initial is the, the various events. You know, my, my position, as we said before, is a public facing uh, uh, director. A, 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 a hugging type of person. Well, COVID-19, yep. the hugging, we see, can't do any hugs. Nope. <laughs> you know, we got to do that. And PP according with that as well. So that's that's a change. Uh, the various events that I would normally do, uh, all of those have been stricken from the book, so we don't need to do those traditional events that we normally would, celebrations that we normally would. For example, the first one was Memorial Day. That was the first big holiday 
that we weren't able to celebrate normal. We're talking about hundreds of folks together at the Veterans Memorial Cemetery in Exeter. Well, we couldn't do that this year. And this is when the virus was first happening. So we had to restrict it to five participants. And Bill, that hurt because I had to, we had to make the conscious effort to, to exclude a lot of folks from that ceremony. Mm-hmm. In that regard, and we we've learned from that, but those the, that's the that's the course that this virus had put us on, and so that's the biggest some of the biggest takeaways is having the ability to can come together to do ceremonies to honor those we not able to do that in that capacity. Uh, the our office are closed in terms of walk-ins. We got a lot of foot trackers would come in on a monthly basis to come in to get some assistance. Well, that's not the case anymore, and so now we've shifted all of those services virtually. You have to call in advance to set up an appointment. Uh, if you were to do a in-person consultation, you have to go online first through the mobile through the app, the, the state app, to fill out all the paper, the pre-screening process, and you got to present that credential at our entry point uh, when you come into our offices. Uh, we have PPE, a, a portable PPE station uh, for our clients that will come in uh, for that too as well to ensure that they are safe. So, because it's the two points now. Not only do we got to make sure we take our clients safe, our veterans, military families, I got to ensure our staff is operating safely uh, as well. That they're adhering to the guidance, they're utilizing PPE, and that we're minim- make sure we're maintaining social distancing. Uh, we got. I look around in my office now. We got plexiglass all over the place to assist us with putting up a barrier to help mitigate the effects of the virus in that regard too as well. Yeah, and it's that's something that for the most part, who knows how much longer, even after, quote unquote, the virus is contained, the, the vaccine is there. I mean, we're not just going to one day tear the plexiglass down. So this is probably sort of a long term type of situation that you've got, you know, you're going to have to manage as will everyone else. Absolutely. But, you know, my glass is always half, half full, never half empty. And with their with their with their with their crisis is an opportunity for mm-hmm. us to adjust what we're, what we're doing. And, uh, and then we mitigate accordingly. And but at the end of the day, serving veterans and military families in, in that regard to it. And a part it's a partnership, local, state, and federal. We saw today, I think, or maybe it was yesterday, there, there's a report that COVID is impacting folks who have any type of mental illness at an alarming rate. And also that there are mental illness, I guess, exaggerations that happen once you get COVID. So that includes PTS. That includes a lot of things that face that our veteran community faces. So, has that been a challenge that you've seen here in uh, in this this bizarre and, and trying year? Oh, a- absolutely. Uh, in, in that regard, the separation from, from the loved ones and just transitioning back, and those are those are all valid concerns. And it is, and this 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 virus has forced us to be more distant, stand off in that regard as well. But we utilize those services through telehealth. Uh, we'll partner with our VA to connect veterans uh, remotely. I remember uh, about uh, middle of the summer of last year, I had a, a, inter- a, call, a call with a, a meeting with President Sanchez from Rhode Island College. Mm-hmm. And he is a passionate leader, cares about our veterans. And he, when he, he was like, if there is a way I can address the mental health remotely, i.e. If a, if a student uh, is, in the, is in their dorm room, they don't have to leave their room. They can, we can connect with them remotely. Well, lo and behold, the virus has hit, and this is exactly what we're doing to connect with folks. So there's always a way, there's always hope. And if this bridges the gap to, to reduce that stigma, that it is okay not to be okay. And now I have to live those words too. Bill, I shared with you before, you know, walk to walk, talk to talk. You know, if, if I'm asking veterans and military families to trust me, to be that shoulder to lean on. Social is obviously the COVID, COVID world. And, and, and then I got to do that. I have to practice what I preach. Uh, I made no mistake about it. When I, I, I mean, it's no words when I said we lost our son to drug addiction. And, and that's, that hurts me more. And I cannot ease that suffering. And I can, I can lead a nation. I can lead individuals. Yet I can't even help my son navigate through those waters. And that's, that's humbling. You know, in, in that regard as well. But it, I think people have to make their own decisions in life. We got to be there, show compassion, and all offer those services, and, and use me as an example of guess what? It hurts. You know, my wife still struggle with it. Hurt. We've worked. We struggle with it together. But through talking, through venues like this, 
to openly come out and say, hey, it's not okay. It's okay not to be okay. And but let's get some let's give an assistance. And I asked, did you take that step? I'm gonna take two steps toward you. I'm a tall guy, so my step is longer than the average person uh, in that capacity. But it talks to the point that I'm not on this island by myself. We have so many other resources that are out there, and we live in a world today that I can come out and say, I'm not a, I'm not feeling my best mentally in, in that regard. I need some assistance. Help me. And we're there, to, we're there to pick it up from the state agency level, like I said, to municipality level, uh, private sector. Our nonprofits are doing tremendous work uh, in this area. So we have to work together to resolve this. Absolutely. It's interesting. There's an episode coming up that we, I already taped it. It'll, it'll most likely be airing on Friday where we hear from some mental health service providers in the state and how much their life has been made more difficult from not necessarily budget cuts, but just from, again, that being able to get in the room with people and also people who are just, for whatever reason, you know, the, the extra layer is difficult for them to overcome. If you found, but you seem to find that with the veterans community you're dealing with, they're willing to engage virtually and, and you're having success in serving those who are in need and you're under your auspices right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, I, I got to tell you, you know, we, I, I, I know I'm not on this journey myself because I know I, I talk frequently with our federal leadership uh, mm-hmm. for the Private Fee Medical Center the regional benefits office. We call ourselves a tri- another triad in that regard. And so we're, 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 in, we're literally attached at the hip, working together to identify resources. Uh, there are times when uh, a veteran may not be eligible for the VA in some regards. Well, we connect and rapidly connect them with other services uh, as well through our Rhode Island Search platform because we have providers that are in our network working together to connect uh, that veteran. And you know, it's hard, Bill, when you pick up a phone number, dial 800 number, had to hit five different buttons. You had to tell express your story to five different people. That's frustrating. And if I'm a call and I'm trying to get some assistance, I might give up. I may hang up the phone. Okay, you know what? I just figured out, I pray on it, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's, not, that's not the case. And so we want to connect folks uh, in a timely manner with service providers and do no wrong though. No wrong to approach this. Uh, for example, on our state's website, vets.ra.gov, at the bottom of the page, there's a contact us link. You fill out that form, you hit, you hit send, hit submit. I get that email and my staff members get that email. Within 24, 40 hours, somebody's going to respond to connect you regarding what the inquiry might be. It may require a referral through our Rhode Island Service platform, or it may be a simple uh, email back to the schedule, here's a head to point you in the right direction, or we might have to schedule an appointment for a follow-up consultation that we get you on the line with one of our case managers and we walk through the process in terms of eligibility based on your character of service. What are you trying to accomplish? Hey, let's get you in, in, in the right direction. But what we've learned through our Rhode Island platform that the veteran family member that come in, they, they may think they want one, they need one thing, but in actuality, they need more than one thing. And it's in terms of our intake personnel who's, re- who's touching base with that veteran to understand what the resources are available, additional resources, and then connect them uh, with that regard as well. And I, and I shared with you, for example, one of my veterans came in. He was trying to get a property a tax exemption from his local municipality based on his character service. Then he's like, okay, let me see your DD-214, your paperwork that shows you character service. He's like, my, one of my staff members like, wait a minute. You got a Purple Heart doing battle? Yeah. The Kirk Alvarez with the battle? He's like, yeah, why? What does that mean? You're automatically ineligible for BA benefits. Automatic. He didn't know that. And this was years had passed between when he, when he, when he, when he, when he got injured and in, wounded in combat and he came home and he just didn't pay it in the mind. And so this is why, you know, one thing triggered a daisy chain of other things. And now the veteran, and he brought his family with him too. He said, do you know dad has been over this over 45, 50 years that your dad was eligible for something? And so now he's enrolled and there's, 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 there's a success story. But as any veteran, I say that are not enrolled in the VA healthcare system, please take the time, seek out a, a, a service officer and assist you with that process. 
Yeah, that's fascinating. Connecting those dots. I mean, that's really the one of the main roles of your office and something you've, you know, you've you've become well known for is is one at a time piecing those who served and and their families, I guess piecing the 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 options together, whether that be benefits or otherwise. Discover over 200 episodes of Rhode Island's podcast of record, the Bartholomew Town Podcast, on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your pods. Or head over to our website, ripodcast.com. Discover live streams, daily content, and more by visiting btown.stream. That'll take you to the Bartholomew Town Podcast Facebook group, btown.stream. What about when we think about um, COVID, we obviously think about the elderly population congregate settings, so on and so forth. What about veter- elderly veterans right now, particularly those who don't have much fa- many family members? Um, how has that been for you? Are, are you finding that you're getting a lot of, of, of communications from people who are in that most vulnerable bracket? Wow, that's a great comment. So there's a, there's a lot to unpack. I've been wanting to use this phrase <laughs> with you for a while. There's a, lot, there's a lot to unpack, Bill. So let me just take this <laughs> segment by segment. I've been waiting to use that for like there months. There it is. <laughs> so, but, but no, uh, so, so here, here's, here's the deal with that. So our early pop, so 70% of our veteran population are over the age of 55. Mm-hmm. Technology wasn't necessarily their strong suit relative to other demographics. And so when we design programs, we need to gather the common down to make it so they can understand it and make it easily navigatable in that regard. For example, our state's website, we, we did some beta testing on it. We had all walks of life come in to try to poke holes in it, to try to make it right, because that's their tool for them to utilize the resource. And so we t- that's the approach that we took uh, regarding development of our website. This is, we're talking about the greatest generation now of veterans, too, that served this nation. And now we were told that they, they're restricting their ability to go visit loved ones. Uh, that I talked about, they just have coffee breaks, just to go out for a coffee shop, to sit there and just talk about things and do little things on their own. Well, that world has still no longer existed anymore, so they're not able to do those things in that regard. And that's hardening. I was at the uh, veteran's home uh, yesterday with Senator Reed, to prevent the, with one of the private sector uh, folks that are there to deliver uh, donations to our residents. Talk to two of the veterans that were there. They were so upset about how what this virus had totally changed their lifestyle. Can't go to point A to point B without being placed in quarantine. And I was can't visit the other loved ones on a routine basis. All the visitation had to be arranged prior to. Before COVID, you can come and go as you please. We don't live in that world now because we got to be, be mindful of the disease in itself, but also to protecting yourself and protecting others. And so that's very hard on our population. Mom and dad, now, we, now we're approaching Thanksgiving. And now that's totally, this virus is totally changing our ability to get together, to be thankful for what we have more versus what we don't have in that regard to as well. It's extremely disheartening. But through our network, connecting those with various services and just the ability to talk to loved ones, to talk. And we utilize uh, this platform, Zoom, uh, FaceTime to connect veterans with their loved ones. And so they are now becoming tech savvy yeah. in that regard as well. I have a I have a monthly meeting with United Veterans Council Group. Uh, these are the elders of I, I call it the heads of the nine families, the nine veteran service organization. All of those folks are over age fifty five. We start out meeting it in, in, in person. So the virus hit. We shipped to a conference call, and then we slowly gravitated over gravitated over to Zoom. So now our monthly meetings are done via Zoom. And guess what? We kept a couple of mute button issues, but other than that, <laughs> <laughs> which we all struggle with that mute button. Right. But no, but it goes to show you how they've grown and learned. But it's yep. a slow, deliberate process to guide them through. Uh, before I participated in various tutorials, Zoom tutorials, where I shared that information, I just forwarded it right over to them to, and I walked them through the login process in that regard. And it's the same thing we do if a veteran had came in off the street, walked in, and they need to apply for something online. We have the resources here. We will walk them through that we have a laptop and a computer system set up. It looks just as though when you're at home at your workstation at home. And we walk them through it to show them how to log in, how to apply for something, fill out the form online, and we submit it together over their shoulder in that regard. So it's very similar, similar setup there too. So. What's your message to anyone out there that's listening right now, and I'm sure this applies to a lot of folks that are not veterans, that, that are, um, well, maybe they are, but, but when they consider COVID, 
they don't necessarily put veterans into the list of things that they think about with major concerns, I guess. Right. Well, we're such a small state. The governor said it best uh, during her second inauguration, her speech. She said, our size is our strength, our ability to get the right people in the room to talk through things. And in uh, and, and person, and trust me, I tell you, you know, if I if I need something from another agency, my brothers and sisters, their colleagues in state government, they're there. They have our back. If I need an assistant from another one of the nonprofits, because that's what they, that's their specialty, we have, they have our back. Uh, if I need some assistance from our federal VA partners, they have our back. And for my congressional delegation, all four who have been phenomenal uh, with regard to reach out and providing services. And uh, we got there, they got our back. And so from the governor's office, the General Assembly, all tugging in the right direction to support uh, boards the team because we are a small state, because we have the capabilities of working together to reaching out and to utilizing platforms like yours or your podcast to help spread the word and to have to connect with folks. Okay, yeah, I listen at all. I remember Director Young was saying something about on Bill's podcast about, oh, get some assistance, this RI serves thing, or his his office being central located in Warwick, or we can't, we can only do the dial in, or here's the phone number, 401-921-2119, or the vets.ri.gov, to click with him that way, and, and, uh, and, it's, and or through social media. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and then we go from there. Director Yarn, you are, uh, you've been on fire as well. I guess last, last question here is, I mean, you're not running for public office. We've already established that. Well established, well documented. <laughs> so do you intend to, I mean, you've got a ways to go, obviously. I mean, we've, there's, there's still several years in, in your, uh, you know, your tenure here, but yes, looking ahead, I mean, you've become sort of a, a treasured Rhode Islander. Do you see yourself sticking around? Oh, I'm not leaving this this blessed love. This the state has given me so much, and, and I, I, and I, you get, I can't take things for granted. We hear horror stories about other states. Every state's got an issue. We get that. There, name me a state that doesn't have an issue. That world does not exist. Yep. And so let's just let's, let's put that away and let's just say, hey, let's work on the issues that we have and the betterment of Rhode Island. Leverage the capabilities from what other states are doing to take the good from that and try to adapt it here in our, in, in our state. We get other states calling me all the time and say, hey, it's this thing you're doing with veterans. I like this. This RI serves thing, the involvement, the direct interaction. You got your all four of your codels at the same that come to a venue to talk about things. That's unpre- that's unheard of. Well, that's that's part of that's who we are as Rhode Islanders in that regard as well. And I would offer you is this, you know, we we know we don't live in a perfect world, but if there's issues that we that we come across. Bring it to our attention so we can address them in, in, in that regard. So once we, it's on my watch. And that's another thing too, leadership. And leadership is a lonely business. But with, with identifying, that I have an open door policy. If anybody have a concern on their watch, you see something that's not right, speak up about it and we're going to get it addressed and we're going to fix it. And that way for the next time we come across that path, we, we've learned from it, taking lessons learned, but effective practices. That's leadership. That's management in that regard as well. And uh, if you're, if a veteran that's in crisis and need a family member, reach out to my office and we're going to utilize our resources and leverage other resources from other uh, agencies. For example, like I said, our federal partners, our nonprofits, other state agencies, all working on this together to, to help off our veterans and, and, and military families in that regard as well. And we're mindful of the virus. And it is taking this toll mainly on some folks. And we, when one death is one too many. And uh, but again, let's take this as a pause to reflect, to learn, and to, to treat you know each other with dignity and better respect for each other in life, and life, and and work through this. And we will come out, we will come out better at the end of this. And taking a lesson like, yes, does that mean I got plexiglass all over the place? But then, so be it is what it is. <laughs> Happy Veterans Day, and thanks for your service, of course. And um, hey, until next time, right? Yes, sir. I, I hear you. I, I follow you all the time. So I'm looking forward to the next venue. And uh, where you, you, Bill, you know, I'm one of your biggest fans as well. I'm one of your followers. So anytime you want me to come on and talk about something, anything, I, I'm, I'm transparent as, as humanly possible. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me, to all your listeners. Well, that, that means a lot to me. And it's, it's extremely mutual, no doubt about it. So beautiful. Absolutely, sir. This is... The Bartholomew Town Podcast. For even more content, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Bill Bartholomew. At HealthSource RI for Employers, we provide access to health insurance to more than 1,100 local businesses and nonprofits. And 96% of them renew through us every year. 
Maybe it's our choice of 19 different health plans, our 10 years of customizing solutions, or our one local team of dedicated experts helping employers find quality health insurance. See how our numbers stack up for you. Learn more at healthsourceri.com slash employers.